Hope you have your Bible. Look with me here tonight for a few minutes. We're going to look in the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. I think, uh, Daryl, I think I'm going to use this tonight so I can hold it a little closer because I have uh, a little bit of a voice uh, problem. Matthew chapter 16. And I'll try to, I'll do my best to hold it up here where it, it will do some good. We're looking in Matthew 16, if you'll turn there with me. And I'm going to read here beginning with verse 13. Matthew 16 and verse number 13. I know these verses are verses that we read uh, fairly often. But um, if uh, I think most of you probably are like me in that you have a real love for the church, a real love for the church. And I, I don't mean just our church, but you really love the church, both local and uh, everywhere. And it's uh, it's such an important uh, principle uh, that uh, is laid down here in these verses. And let's look at it here, Matthew 16 and 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. The church has a lot of wonderful uh, qualities. But one, one of the blessed qualities of the church is that we, we accomplish so much more in our collective efforts. Someone had sent me a little uh, YouTube uh, Video, you know, they have these little clips that they uh, they can email them to you or post them or whatever. And uh, this was a, a video. Some of you may have seen it. A video that was shot in one of the African countries, and um, uh, they're they're filming a herd of I think it's like um, Brahma type uh, cattle, the kind that has the big horns. They look like Texas Longhorns. Uh, but the, a whole herd of them, they're moving along a, a stream or a river. And uh, and then someone says, oh, look over there. And they move the camera way to the right. And in the grass, there are about uh, four or five lions. And they are crouched down, ready to attack. And those cattle are moving right in their direction. And the cameraman is moving back and forth. To show how close, and you can see the lions. I mean, their their muscles are getting tense, and they're ready to to pounce on these animals. And uh, and so they get closer and closer, and suddenly these lions just jump and run at them. But when they do, the whole herd is all you know. I don't know how to say it except they got tore up, and they turned, and they're trying to get away. And these lions are running at them. And I noticed that, that all these big animals, these big cattle are, are, you know, they're, they're just all moving away together. But the lions, they focused in on one of the little baby calves and got a hold of that baby calf and got it down in the water. And, uh, and not only was that pretty upsetting? And I'm not that big of an animal person, but it was pretty upsetting to see that they got this little baby calf down in the water. But then to top it off, one of the guys says, look there, two huge crocodiles came up. And the lions and the crocodiles were fighting over that baby calf. 
and going back and forth. And finally, the lions pull that baby calf out of the river and pull it up on the, uh, up on the bank. But about that time, something really amazing happens. All this herd of cattle with their big long horns, they come in together and they circle around those those lions. And one of the bigger ones comes in and with his horns, or whatever you call it, he goes in for one of those lions and he actually picks the lion up and throws it. And I just wanted to say, praise God. <laughs> it was just, uh, and this was all reality uh, it, that uh, what was taking place. But long story short, that little calf got up and they saved it from those lions and from the crocodiles. They did it collectively, all got together, and they put those lions on the run. Praise God. Amen. Now, there certainly is a great spiritual application to that uh, scene, and I don't know where to tell you. Uh, just go on YouTube and search for it. Uh, but it's on there. It's, it's such an interesting thing. But we know that that's exactly the way that the enemy works against the people of God. That's how he attacks. He waits. He attacks. And then he looks for the weak, the young, the vulnerable, the sick. And then he, he goes after them. So really, the first, the first roar and the, and the, 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 uh, the, the running and the pouncing of those lions was intended to scare off the rest of the herd so they get that one little weak baby calf. And I have witnessed that in the church many, many times. A new convert, a new Christian, or someone that's going through a real trying time, uh, physically sick, or maybe just going through a, a spiritual a struggle uh, in their life, and uh, and uh, you know the enemy is 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 focused in upon destroying. Of course, he he'll destroy whoever that he can. But if you allow yourself to become weak and vulnerable, and to lose faith and confidence, you're going to be under attack. Amen. Now, when Jesus said, I will build my church, that was not Jesus saying uh, the gates of hell are not going to be able to prevail against it. Uh, the terminology is not that, uh, you know, uh, you can he's going to we need to build a fort and and uh, and uh, protect ourselves. That's not the terminology at all. It's not uh, talking about, you know, uh, uh, building a fort or you know, circling the wagons to try to protect yourself. Jesus was saying, I'm going to build my church and it's going to be a part of an advancing into the enemy's territory. I was reading a little bit about lions. Lions don't pursue after herds like that. They're very ter territorial. And if some comes into their territory, that's when they attack. And you can be sure that that's what happens whenever the church begins to pray and they begin to reach out to some unsaved. And, you know, every time, as I mentioned, every time that you break into a new family, you have an opportunity to reach out into a new family. Uh, you're moving into Satan's territory. He hates that. He hates that. He loves it when the church is just kind of, you know, going along, barely surviving and... Uh, uh, but whenever the church begins to call on the Lord and seek the Lord and press the Lord, uh, uh, you know, for signs and wonders and miracles, uh, asking the Lord to do some mighty, wonderful things, you can be sure that the enemy is going to do all that he can to hinder that. Amen. When he said, I'll build my church, he was saying, I'm, I am the, the responsible one. I'm the one. I'm the responsible one. I'm the force. I'm the power. Behind the expansion of the church. It is not dependent upon you and me. It is dependent upon Him. And we put our trust in Him. And we uh, yield ourselves to what He's wanting to do. And He's the one that causes the church to advance. Glory to God. Ride into the enemy's territory. Praise the Lord. And I just, I want to encourage you tonight that, you know, you may be feeling a little bit weary with well-doing. You know, you may, you know, you're staying at it, you're continuing your prayer. Some of you have been fasting and praying and uh, you're, you're, 
you know, you've been at it for, for quite a while, just calling upon the Lord and believing God to do some wonderful, uh, mighty things. And well, God's at work. He's the one that's going to build his church. He's the one that's, that's going to change, uh, the, the circumstance and, and we need to put our confidence in what he has said he would do. I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be able to prevail or stop the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. In these last days. Praise the Lord. Now, it includes a lot of different things. A lot of people love to say, well, you know, it doesn't matter how many people that we have, but you cannot read the book of Acts without seeing that there is great emphasis put upon the Lord added to the church and even numbers. You can't read the book of Acts and not take notice of the the fact that Every, uh, that the numbers, uh, were, every number was a person. Every number was a soul. A- a- an individual that needed, needed the Lord. And so when the Lord added to the church such as would be saved, the hundreds came, the thousands came and were brought in uh, to the kingdom of God. And so uh, let's, let's not shy away from the fact that whenever Christ builds his church, it's going to include more people. Amen. Amen. When he builds his church, it is going to be more people. There are going to be more souls. Many others are going to be affected by the gospel and the advancement of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All throughout the book of Acts, that was the record. The growth was in many different aspects, but it was certainly also numerical growth. Amen. There's nothing wrong at all with us. A lot of times people shy away from this. There's nothing wrong with asking the Lord, Lord, bring them in, bring them in and help me to, uh, to be used of you, uh, Lord, to witness and to reach out to, uh, to, to bring those into the house of the Lord, the numbers of people. So the growth, uh, it related to people. It related to souls. That was true in Jerusalem and Palestine. It was true in Samaria. It was true all. It was it was the missionary movement. Amen. It was the move of God as they were sent forth from Antioch. It involved cities, Philippi, Corinth, Thessalonica, Ephesus, Athens, and on and on. The list of different uh, uh, locations uh, where the gospel was preached at in every location, people. Numbers of people were brought in to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When Jesus said, I will build my church, that growth included numbers of people. Amen. So don't, don't shy away from praying about that. Lord, fill our building with hungry, searching souls. Fill up every part of this building with people who are hungry for God. Amen. They're here. They're in our community. Uh, they're within our, our reach. It isn't a bad thing at all uh, to pray that the Lord would cause the church to grow numerically and also to grow uh, in uh, uh, the level of maturity in the body of Christ. But we are to mature in the body so that we become a tool uh, that God can use to evangelize and reach out to the world. We mature uh, for as as believers. We grow in the in in the level of maturity, so that we can be uh, that vessel that uh, will have even a greater impact and be more useful in the kingdom of God. We mature in in prayer. We mature in our witness. We mature in our lifestyle as a witness and a testimony uh, to the world uh, that's in need. So we need to be growing in numbers. Amen. We need to be growing up uh, and maturing as a as a body. It's not the will of God that we continue as you know immature as children. Children, the Scripture says that that they are easily swayed. If you don't grow up in the Word, don't grow up in the things of God. If you don't mature, then you are going to be prey to the enemy. Every wind of doctrine, everything that comes your way, you'll be easily swayed by uh, the society and the culture of the day that we're living in right now. We need to grow in numbers. We need to grow in 
in, uh, in maturity. We need to grow in the church. We need to become a stronger body. What a vivid illustration of what can happen when people pull together. When we all work cooperatively uh, together, we can defeat a great enemy. We can destroy the works of the enemy. We can enjoy the victory that comes uh, uh, to a group, to a body that will not come to just an individual. Amen. We grow numerically. We, we grow in maturity. We grow in strength. Because we're, we're stronger because we have bound together. Amen. Bound together. Well, what a blessing uh, that it is in the church when the church is moving as one. Moving as one. In a spirit of unity. Moving in the same direction. Working and, and, and praying and pressing into the things of the Lord. We become stronger as a result. We need to grow also in our in in our influence. Amen. We, we of course our our world that we live in is a is a culture that is so opposite of the things of God. Uh, but uh, we're still to be salt in this present generation. We're to be the the light. We're to be the city set on a hill. We're to be growing in our influence. Taking advantage of every opportunity uh, to, to let uh, the testimony of the Lord to be shining forth uh, from our lives and from our, our collective uh, testimony. Amen. Glory to God. Growing in strength. Growing in maturity. Growing in numbers. Growing in influence. Amen. Another area. Growing in the quality. The quality of our our ministry. Amen. Uh, by that I mean that we, we, we should be striving to be better. To do it better. To do ministry better. To be able to, to, to reach out to, to people uh, in a more effective way. To carry on the work of the ministry in, in a more effective way. We need to be improving. Bettering ourselves. Uh, through the knowledge of the Lord, through uh, uh, learning and growing and developing in the things of the Lord. Amen. Through teaching and through preaching and through the ministry and really even through uh, the, uh, uh, the motivation that comes from each other. Iron sharpeneth iron. We, 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 we encourage one another. We motivate one another. And we ought to be challenging one another to do better. Amen. Whatever your calling, whatever your your ministry is, ask the Lord to help you. Lord, give me new methods. Give me new new uh, tools. Give me a greater ability. Help me, Lord, to uh, to be able to communicate to this generation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give help me to improve and to be more than I have been in the past. Amen. Certainly. Uh, methods, the gospel is the same, the message is the same, and uh, uh, that will never change. But sometimes we know that the tools and the methods do change over the process of a lot of years. And so we take advantage of those tools that the Lord gives to us to make sure that the, the church ministry is growing, improving, amen, more effective than it has been ever before. Praise God. And I, I'm I'm thankful to be a, a part of a church that that realizes the potential of this of uh, of what can happen whenever a body binds together. Amen. Now I know we're right in the middle of summertime. This is vacation season. People, it's almost like people are scattering different directions uh, every every uh, week. But we don't lose sight of our focus. Amen. We we, uh, we remain true uh, to our our focus. We were gone for eight days, and I told Marsha after six days, I'm ready to go home. And I would have already been home, but the plane tickets were scheduled for the eighth day. Now, on the sixth day, I was ready. Uh, I'm ready to go back home, and I'd, I'd had enough uh, of uh, even Colorado was beautiful, but I, I I was I was through. 
and I was ready to come back home. Amen. Amen. I, I, I believe in the, in the power and the effectiveness of the local church. Amen. I just ask the Lord, Lord, stir up in all of us a renewed vision that we could see that it's your will. I will build my church and there's not one thing that Satan can do about it. He cannot stop it. The only thing that will, that will stop uh, the progress of the church is you and me. If we determine that we are just going to, you know, lose our vision and not press and not put our our whole heart into it, become weary uh, with uh, with well doing, and just kind of become careless and lax in uh, the work that the Lord has called us to do. If we were all giving a hundred percent, if we were all pouring our heart into it. Amen. I believe that we would see some wonderful, mighty things take place. Amen. I'm trusting the Lord for some of these miracles uh, to be uh, the force that causes uh, people to say something is happening at that location. As they hear the word of this person was healed and that person, their life was Transformed, and this one was delivered, and and that report goes forth, and uh, people are drawn uh, to uh, the church that is witnessing the power of God. Hallelujah, Amen. I will build my church; the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's trust the Lord over these coming weeks. Lord, do a work. Do a work, even in the middle of the summertime. Amen. Do a work. And I, I, I have been encouraged and challenged by the fact that, that, he, that we've had several visitors in our services that keep coming in to the meetings. And that we're going to believe the Lord to do something wonderful and mighty this week. Amen. Let's stand together. Father, thank you, Lord, that the church can grow and it's your will that it grows in every respect that we've mentioned here tonight. Every area, Lord, numerically and, and uh, in maturity and in strength, Lord, and in influence, Lord, and, and in the quality of our, our ministry and all these different areas, Lord, it is Your will ah, that the church grows. And Lord, I just pray that You would, you would help each one of us to, to see it and to, to catch the vision for what You are wanting to do And that the enemy is not going to be able to succeed if we bind together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there is power, Lord, in the body of Christ bound together for a common cause. And we're believing you to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can we just take a moment and just thank the Lord for the promise of God that's available to every one of us and to us right here at this location. Hallelujah. (coughs) Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we know that you are working. We know you are providing. We know you're empowering us, Lord, and you're leading us, Lord, in in a particular direction. And we thank you for that. And we ask, Lord, that you will just stir our hearts, Lord, Stir us, Lord, with a renewed vision and a renewed desire. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we sing that chorus?